so here's our next necklace. Yeah. Then the, so there's multiple all strands, and and Oops, lift it up. It's groups of three for each thing. Yeah, three for each thing. All done in seed beads. So that's a lot of work. Let's see. Uh, if we count each group of uh, each of the group together, the beads. It's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Eight necklaces. I mean strands. Yep. And they all work down in a really nice, uh, like a really nice two. bib. And then on the sides here we have um, uh, a stringer plate that yep. separates all the strands with gold beads. And then we have blue and what? Blue and wow. gold and. And then for some reason there's one random pink. Well, bead there's in some there. different. There's a few random ones. Some clear brownies. Okay. Some gold, so there's Italy. more seed beads up to these gold metal beads. And on this other same on the other side. See, so there's a random green one, a random white one. The pink one I feel is most out of place. Oh, okay. So I'm not sure where this would have been made. Um, these are probably hand coiled tubes that they all that the multiple strands go into and then into the one final strand. So a nice uh Fair trade, probably necklace or uh, tourist necklace. A little, very colorful. Great to wear in the summer, I think. Amazing. Okay. All of these. All right. So next, we have this long necklace. Let's see. Uh, can you measure it now? Okay. Let me. You you describe it while I try to figure All out right. how long it might be. I think it's plastic. Yeah. Like a light blue. Plastic beads with a, a white string that they were on. Uh, so 72 inches? Yeah. Approximately. It's like a, let's see, what shade of blue is that? Well, it's almost, it's almost like a minty green. That would be nice on a Christmas tree. I would call those Mardi Gras beads, but they're not better than better looking than a lot of the Mardi Gras beads. They're a very, very pretty color. Very pretty. Yeah. Sea foam green, maybe. Alrighty. Here, this is something you can show. Alright, then next we have this pretty necklace. Let's see, uh how long is that? I don't know how long one. About 18 inches. About 18 inches. Yeah. We'll have to measure your hand span soon. And uh, so at the one end here, there's a little, little bead on that. And there's a little bead he here at the end of the uh, wings for the lobster claw clasp. So it's adjustable size. And then the pendant is a nice. A metal disc with red rhinestones on it, but um, a few of the rhinestones came out. Let's see, is it focused? There we go. Oh, all right. Some of the rhinestones are bigger than the others. The, the two that came out were like a bigger size, slightly bigger, mm -hmm. like the medium. We might be able to repair that. We might be yeah. able to fix that. Yeah, we'll probably be able to fix it. So, so this is something different, and I'm not sure if really it's pretty. pewter. It almost looks like uh, tarnished silver, but you can see it's not marked in any way on the back. It's a lightweight chain that goes up to a hook and uh, and an eye. Well, I'm just gonna get grab my. Um... Oh, I wish we had a magnet. Can you go grab a magnet? Please, and I'm gonna grab my buffer. So I'm just gonna buff the back of this and see how much it shines up. Doesn't much shine up, so it's probably probably pewter. But we'll see. Uh, we'll see what happens when MJ comes back with a magnet. Which of these three magnets would you like, Nina? Let's have the big one here. So is this magnetic? No, it's not nope. not attracted to the magnet at all. What about this one? 
no this one's the strongest one so okay well we'll have to see actually where's that other um chain that we thought might be silver that said it was italy this one here so let's see if it's attracted to the magnet no we can use the testing stuff oh the the clasp is the clasp magnet or part of the clasp. Well, it could be the spring part in the clasp now we'll we'll test them another day when we have uh, more time okay. okay so here's a bunch of um, seed bead necklaces there are two long brown ones probably probably 72 inches and then two long um, green and brown so you could wear these all together they coordinate quite nicely you could wear them separately you could knot them lots of things that you could do with them i'm certainly not going to take the seed bead necklaces apart because they're very usable uh, in the way they are um here's something that else with seed beads why don't you show that one so next we have this pretty necklace uh, with seed be beads, a bunch of seed beads, mm -hmm. and then it has it has these is a uh, clear plastic beads, plastic reason. beads. There we go. And then uh, it has these wooden beads as well. These two. Wooden beads, the types of wooden beads. Those are nice wooden beads. That might be worthwhile taking apart. Yeah. Okay, here, you put that on so you can model it while I show off this necklace. So here's another long necklace. It has an extender, a lobster claw clasp, and if I turn this correctly, you'll be able to see it's a Leo Sophia tag. These are a greenish glass um, beads within metal frames. So they're actually separate. This one here at the, at the bottom could act, oh, which one did, what did I see? This one could actually turn right around. They don't all do that. So we've got rectangles and yeah. circle frames, and then some of them have beads in it. So this would be, let's see. We double it up, probably 36 inches long. Yeah. Yeah, yeah the piece that you put on. All right, so next we have this uh, pretty board bracelet with uh, three hearts on it. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, that. I guess I'd call it a clamp back. or a hook bracelet. I'm not sure. That's okay. very pretty. Perfect really size pretty. for you, I think. Yep. Okay. Alrighty. Then we have a, a hair barrette in the shape of a moon. Uh, um, partial moon. And we have this necklace labeled Bijou Terne. I'll have to look that one up online. And it's a festoon necklace. So it comes down, it's gold, uh, gold tone with glass pearls, comes down and then uh, has loops that festoon from station to station across the center. I'm going to lay it on the table and see if I can straighten it out so you can see the pattern a little bit better. Oh, this one doesn't want to untangle. There we go. Okay, so that's very, very pretty. I'm assuming that this is an, a modern piece. But there you can get an idea of uh, how it would look.
I have to find my um, MJ. Can you go down in there and find the things for holding necklaces, or maybe we'll put it on a stand? Okay. Okay. While you're doing that, here's uh, an illusion necklace on black wire. It's three strands of plastic beads of grays, clears, and blacks. And uh, it's quite lengthy, actually. So I'd say 36 inches for the length of the longest piece and 18 for the shortest. So you can tell it just goes on and on and on and on and on. Okay. So uh, you have slight problem with Ellie. Okay, so here's the festoon necklace. Not sure if it's any better on the, if it shows off any better this way or not. Let's try it. There we go. Okay. Here, can you hold this? So here's what the festoon necklace looks like. That's a little better way of showing it off. My uh, mannequin's not quite wide enough for it. Okay. All right. And let's try it. Let's put that one on the table, Miriam. And to give you an idea of the illusion necklace, how long it is, it goes from there all the way up to there. So you can see it's very long. Okay. So next we have this, uh, I, is it supposed to be a choker necklace? Or That's, I think it's, I think it's a regular necklace. It's not, let's move this out of the way. It's just twisted funny. This is an excellent condition. It's just, there we go. So, at least 18 inches. Pretty, pretty. Mm -hmm. So, we've got gold toned discs with pearls in the center here. Yep. And then, like donuts, same pattern. La, lobster claw clasp. And here on the end, we have the maker's name, which is Vendome, V-E-N-D-O-M-E. -E. So um, I'll look up the, how, what the relationship is um, to other manufacturers. I think there's some a relationship between Coro and Vendome. But that's a very pretty necklace. Um, so post-79 or 1979, uh, is when they started using these lobster claw clasps. Um, so, it, but it's in excellent shape for being a vintage necklace. Here's another chain, heavy chain, choker necklace. This one's, well, I guess it's not choker, it's 18 inches, but it's heavy with an extender. Um, it's a pair of earrings that you could do. Okay. And then I've got another pair of earrings. So, next we have uh, this pretty pair of earrings here. Uh, nice, a uh, lime green color. Again, plastic made to look like shell, I think. I would and, agree, yeah. And then some more plastic beads, like a clear color. But then these metal rings. Oops. Yeah, and these little metal rings. And then there's 
these uh, bigger metal wings hanging off with some uh, with like a pattern in them. Very nice. Yeah. And how about this set of earrings? Then we have this pair of earrings here. There you go. Sorry. With like a nice blue, a little blue, and then it has a some sort of color. So gold, another shade of blue, purple, and a pinkish white color. Very good. Yeah, very pretty. So then I have a set. It's a little bit broken, but then there's a set. So here's, um, this is what one earring is supposed to look like. And here's the other two parts of the earring. But you can see at the bottom here that the hook that has broken off. And I think it's stuck in here. So that would have gone together as one earring. And then, if I push that off to the side... Here's the necklace that goes with it. So it's too bad that it's broken. It might have broken in the jar. Modern with a lobster claw clasp. Um, these necklaces are pretty, but I find they're very finicky to wear because of the way they're jointed together. This would be nice on uh, some kind of an assemblage or a picture with a tree in it. I'm not sure what we'll do with that since the one earring is broken. Necklace. So then next we have this necklace with no beads or pendant, just a pretty gold clasp, I mean chain, and then it has a gold uh, spring ring clasp. Yeah. Good. Nice. This has got a knot in it and it's broken, but I actually think it's repairable. This is a, a tiny little necklace with a spring ring clasp. And it's come apart right here. But I think that that can be repaired. I think it just looks like it got twisted apart. So here's what the center of the next necklace looks like. And we're gonna... Hi, so it's Pat Hood from Passions and Pastimes. I'm back to finish off the rest of that jewelry jar that we started with MJ. Um, a few nice things left and then all the singles. So here is a lovely rhinestone hair barrette, still in package. Um, uh, in beautiful shape, not missing any rhinestones. It would look amazing. Um, I'm sure in a nice bun or I know a beautiful waterfall of hair this uh, let me just untangle it a little bit and find all the pieces so this I th is a nice uh, set of what four um, strands of seed beads and it matches very nicely with this I think this was the pendant that was on there but unfortunately it was either broken before it went in the jewelry jar does it no it can't go that way it has to go this way i think it was broken after it went in the jewelry jar because it's missing some little pieces that would join it all together nicely so that's too bad because uh this was uh quite a lovely pendant um so certainly the seed bead necklace is fine on its own, and I am i won't keep the, this part. I don't see any purpose for that. I could possibly smooth this and uh, bead a bale around it. I'm not sure if I want to, but so there's a broken necklace. There was this pin. It says Talula. It's plastic anchor pin. I guess I'll look up Tallulah so I know what that means. There was one single earring like this. 
Like there was another jewelry jar that day, my family tells me, but they thought this one was the best one. Um, so perhaps the matching earrings ended up in there. A nice green uh, acrylic earring that could probably be repurposed. Um, there's this pair of earrings. Um, some kind of plastic. Um, but... The one on the left, you can see that the uh, circle that the ear wire would go through has been broken. They might be useful for kids' crafts. Um, a few more single earrings, if I can detangle them. So there's this single earring. Is this Gauguin? Paint up Gauguin painting. Um, I like this side better. But And if the two had been in there... We could have done something with these, with this pair of uh, of uh, little plaques. So uh, not sure what we'll do with that. This was a cute earring too, and too bad the other one wasn't there. It's a a dolphin leaping through a hoop. So that'll that might come become useful in a I don't know a charm bracelet of sea creatures or something. There was this earring and uh, hmm. interesting pieces of wire, but only one. Now this earring is beautiful. There's just one, a pierced earring. This one would make a lovely little pendant, I think. It'd be very easy to. Uh, either curl the stem or make us pathway for a chain for it to hang on. So that's going to be repurposed. And there's also this single earring. And it has a very nice structure. It would be nice um, to figure out some way to keep this and use it in something. So I'll uh, have to think about that one. There is, I thought this only, when I first found a piece, I thought it was only half was in the jar. You never know if these things break in the jar or when they're put in the jar or do they dump all the, the jewelry in a box and then scoop it into a jar? What do they do? So this has, uh, I think it has a little ring there still. Yes, it does. If we put it out there. So there's a ring there. And then here's the other part of it. So this part... Yeah, you can see it's wide open, so I can probably just uh, clip this back together and tighten it, and there'll be a lovely little necklace, um, uh, spring ring clasp. There's a knot there in the chain, but I, and then do we have, yeah, we have everything else, so it's a very short, it'll be a short necklace, but that's quite cute uh, for, for a little teenager, so that'll be repaired, and uh you still haven't figured out this purpose of this item. So it's two hooks. This is the one that MJ thought was quite interesting. So there's two hooks and lovely gold chain, the iridescent beads, I guess, peacock beads, and then a one bead wired onto this leather loop. So I don't know, is this to, you could hang your glasses there. I have no idea what this was for. Certainly MJ will have lots of fun taking it apart and reusing the beads. You could make, you know, very easily make a bracelet. Um, who knows? So, and then there was the piece that took all the time to untangle oh there's a couple more earrings too well we'll we'll since i've made the done the clickety clackety part um so here's the necklace that was right on the top of the jar with all the beautiful acrylic beads here's how the chain at the uh, uh at the top of it so once it's untangled 18 it's more than 36 inches long and this uh, I've looked up uh, to last
There we go, Teleste. Um, so I'll put some information about that team. But this is heavy. This weighs almost 250 grams, so um, which is half a pound, um, or, or a little over half a pound. So that's a lot of weight to be wearing. But uh, I've looked up um, their jewelry, and I couldn't find anything similar to this. I did find a choker with blue beads like this um, on Poshmark that was reselling for about $35 US. But they had a pair of uh, new earrings on their website that were like little feathery pom-poms maybe an inch across, $134 new. Um, and the same things we're selling, we're selling for under 20 on Poshmark. So uh, you can tell that um, with this jewelry, you can spend upwards or you can spend downwards and still be in the latest fashion. And last but not least, this was a disappointment um lovely butterfly earring like the moniker uh representing a monarch butterfly i guess only one of them but it could make a cute little pendant or a charm and finally um this metal twisted metal earring again just one of them uh there was this earring whoops i just so I've tested this and it's this part is silver and this is it looks to be a piece of coral. There's the part there that makes it look like makes me assume it's coral, has the right feel for it. Probably dyed and then and then coated with to seal it. So that just tested positive for sterling. This one that I thought was pewter. It's not sterling. I don't know how to test for pewter, but it's a cute little uh, uh, pendant and necklace. Lily of the Valley, I think. So that's worth keeping. And this other little chain that was marked 925 Italy. Tested definitely for silver. And we know that um, when we picked up, uh, we tried to pick it up with a magnet just uh the spring ring was attracted to the magnet and that's usually actually the ring inside like the actual spring sorry inside the spring ring clasp so the rest of it did test uh all for 925 very strongly so even though it's very light and very small a little bit of silver so that's always nice um you know i'm not looking for silver or gold in uh jewelry jars but it's always nice to find something special. I think this is finding this is just as special in some ways as finding this because this can be repurposed and given a new life. Um, and you know, some, something like that where you get to, I get to learn about a new designer. So thanks very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. Um, I was so thrilled to get it as a jewelry jar, which I haven't found for a long time. And it was a gift for my birthday. And I hope you'll join me again soon. It's Pat Hood from Passions Pastime. Bye for now.